Welcome to this lesson on solving equations. Let's go over some important vocabulary first. So an equation is a mathematical statement that says that two things, usually expressions, are equal. And an equation always has an equal sign. So 5x plus 6 equals 10. When you're solving an equation, you're finding the value of a variable. You're finding the value that makes that equation true. So if my equation is x plus 4 equals 9, if I want to solve it, x is going to equal 5 because 5 plus 4 equals 9. It makes that statement true. So if I want to solve a one-step equation, that means there's only one step to solve it, I'm going to use the inverse operation, which means the opposite operation. So inverse operations would be like addition and subtraction. Those are opposites. Or multiplication and division. If you do something to one side of an equation, you have to keep the equation balanced. So you have to do the same thing to the other. The same operation. Okay, so let's try some examples. So here I have x plus 2 equals 7. So because I have a plus 2, I want to use the inverse operation. And the inverse of addition is subtraction. So I want to subtract 2. And the reason I do that, do that is because I'm trying to isolate my variable, which means I want to get my variable by itself. So when I do 2 minus 2, that's 0. So I have x alone by itself. Now, because I did that to the left, I have to do that to the right side. I have to subtract 2 from both sides to keep the equation balanced. So I need to subtract these. So I'm going to draw a little line. So 2 minus 2 is 0, so I can just cancel it out. And I'm going to bring down my x. 7 minus 2 is 5. And that is my answer, x equals 5. Now you always want to go back and check and make sure. So I'm going to substitute x back in. So 5 plus 2 equals 7. That is true. All right, number 2. x minus 4 equals 10. So I want to do the inverse of subtraction, which is addition. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0, so I have isolated x. I've gotten x by itself. 10 plus 4 is 14. Let's substitute that back in and check. So when I say substitute it, I'm just substituting in this 14 for this x to make sure that that actually is the value of x to make this equation true. And 14 minus 4 is 10, so that works. Okay, number 3, I have 3x equals 21. So 3x is really 3 multiplied by x. So the inverse of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide by 3 on both sides. And 3 divided by 3 is 1. So it's like I have a 1x. And I can really just write that as x. And then 21 divided by 3 is 7, so x equals 7. All right, let's check and make sure. 3 times 7. 3 times 7 is 21, so that works. All right, on number 4, I have x divided by 5 equals 4. So the opposite or the inverse of division is multiplication. So I'm going to multiply by 5 on both sides. Kind of ran out of room over here on the left, but this is really going to be 5 times x over 5, which is very similar to what we had right here. 5 over 5 is 1, so it's like a 1x or like an x. So you can just cross those out because you don't have to write the 1. 
And 4 times 5 is 20. So x equals 20. And then let's check that. So 20 divided by 5 equals 4. Let's see, 20 divided by 5, that is 4. So we are correct. All right, you try 5 through 8 by yourself. You can pause the video now and try those examples by yourself. Okay, number 5. So we have 8 plus x equals 12. So we want to do the inverse. So we have a positive 8, which is like a plus 8. So the inverse would be minus 8 or subtract 8. So that is 0. We can just bring down our x. And then a 12 minus 8 is 4. And then to check, 8 plus 4 equals 12. That is true. OK, number 6. We have the x on the right side of the equal sign, but it's not going to change anything. We're still going to do the inverse operation. We have a positive 6 here, so I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. 6 minus 6, that's 0, so I bring down my x. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. And then if you want to rewrite it with x on the left, x equals negative 2. And then we can check. Four equals six plus negative two. Well, six plus a negative two is the same thing as six minus two, which is four. All right, number seven, I have 10 equals five times x. So I'm going to divide. The inverse of multiplication is division. So that's like a one x, so I can really just write x. 10 divided by five is two. And if you want to rewrite it, x equals two, that's fine. And then check. Five times two is 10, so we are correct. And the last one, three equals x divided by two. So I wanna multiply by two on both sides. So two times three is six. These are gonna cancel out because two over two is one. One times x, we can just write as x. And if you want to rewrite it, you can. And then to check, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so we are correct. OK, next, let's go into two-step equations. So these have two steps to solve instead of just one. So when you are solving two-step equations, you still are want, wanting to isolate the variable. And one way to think about it is to use the order of operations in reverse order. Now this doesn't always work for every problem. It's just a way to help you get started if you get stuck. So remember the order of operations, you do parentheses, exponents, then multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So instead you want to usually add or subtract first, then you can multiply or divide. There will be some exceptions, however, like a problem like this. So we'll go over those exceptions. Again, this is just one way to start off if you get stuck. OK, so on number one, I have 2x plus 3 equals 13. So this is where I want to get rid of that plus 3 first. I want to isolate the variable x. So I want to do the inverse, which is minus 3. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So 3 minus 3 is 0. I'm going to bring down my 2x, bring down your equal sign, and then I'm going to subtract 13 minus 3, which is 10. Next, I want to get rid of the 2 because I'm trying to get x by itself. That's my goal, to isolate x. So right now, x is being multiplied by 2. The inverse of multiplication is division, so I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. 2 divided by 2 is 1x, but I don't need to write the 1. I can just write x. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. So you can go back and check quickly. So 2 times 5 plus 3. 
let's see, 2 times 5 is 10. 10 plus 3 is 13, so that checks. And remember to check, I'm just substituting 5 back into my original equation for x. Okay, number 2, 15 equals 5x minus 10. So I want to get x by itself. We want to get rid of the minus 10 first because normally we add or subtract first when we're solving equations. So I'm going to do the inverse, which is add 10. So negative 10 plus 10 is 0. I can cancel that out. 15 plus 10 is 25. All right, let's bring everything else down. Next, I want to undo the multiplication here, so I'm going to divide by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1x, which is just x. 25 divided by 5 is 5. You can leave it like that, or you can rewrite it. It really means the same thing. And then you can go back and check if you want to. I'm going to skip the checking so that we can continue on with the lesson, but you can always check by substituting back in. Okay, number three, two minus six x equals 14. So this one is a little bit trickier. So I'm gonna get rid of that two first. And this is a positive two, so I'm gonna subtract two from both sides. So two minus two, that's zero. So I'm gonna bring down my negative six x. Remember, the sign in front of the term stays with the term. So make sure you bring that negative down with the six x. And then 14 minus 2 is 12. Okay, now I'm going to get x by itself by dividing by negative 6 on both sides. Negative 6 divided by negative 6 is 1, so 1x one or just x. 12 divided by negative 6 is negative 2. All right, number 4. The first thing that I want to do is Subtract 3 from both sides. Don't worry about that fraction yet. I know some of y'all saw that and panicked. It's okay. All right, so I'm going to bring down that 2 thirds x. 3 minus 3 is 0, so it cancels out. And then 12 minus 3, that's 9. Okay, so there's a couple different things you can do on a problem like this. You can get rid of the fraction in pieces. I can get rid of the denominator first and then the numerator. Or I can get rid of it all in one step by doing something called multiplying by the reciprocal. So let me show you in pieces first and then I'll show you the other method. So to get rid of it in pieces, I'm gonna get rid of the divided by three part by multiplying by three. So 3 over 3 is 1, so that really cancels out. But be careful, it doesn't cancel the whole fraction out. It just cancels out the denominator. So you have 2 times x left. And then 9 times 3 is 27. Then I can divide by 2 on both sides. 27 divided by 2 is 13.5. So that is one method. Let me go over here and show you how to multiply by the reciprocal, which is really the same thing that we just did, just in one step. So multiply by the reciprocal means to multiply by the, the fraction flipped. So 3 and 3 cancel, 2 and 2 cancel, so I just have x. Now on the right side, I'm going to make this 9 9 over 1 because when I multiply fractions I go straight across. So 9 times 3 is 27, 1 times 2 is 2, and then you just simplify to 13.5. Both ways give you the same answer, it's just whatever you prefer and your teacher prefers. Okay, number 5. This one we have like terms that are on different sides of the equal sign. So I want to combine any like terms first. And I'm going to move the smaller one so that I'm not dealing with negatives if I don't have to. So I'm going to move the 3x by subtracting 3x. So 
So 5x minus 3x, that's 2x. Now I can divide by 2 on both sides, and I have x equals 12. All right, number six, I'm going to subtract that five first. See, that cancels, 30 minus five is 25. Now I have x divided by two. I wanna do the inverse, so I'm gonna multiply by two on both sides. So that cancels. When I say cancels, I mean 2 over 2 is 1. We don't have to write 1x. We can just write x. All right, number 7. 1 half times 14x equals 28. So again, there's a couple different ways you can deal with that fraction. You can multiply by the reciprocal and get rid of it. Or you can just multiply 1 half times 14, and that's going to be an even number, so I'm just going to do that. 1 half times 14 is 7x, and then I just divide by 7 on both sides. That's pretty easy. Alright, number 8. We haven't seen one like this before, so this is kind of the exception to the rule, where I don't want to add or subtract first. Because this whole expression is being divided by 2, so it's kind of stuck together. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of the divided by 2, and I'm going to do that by multiplying by 2 on both sides. And I'm just going to bring down the x minus 4 equals 18, and then I can add 4 to both sides. Okay, stop the video now and try the last two by yourself. All right, on number nine, let's see. Combine like terms. Divide by two, x equals eight. On number 10, I'm gonna multiply first. Bring down that expression on top, and then subtract 1. Okay, you can stop the video now and complete the practice.